Uh, Aya, good day, uh, good evening. Uh, I've got a special guest on today. It's Brad from Brad Barbs, uh, Uddersfield Town fan. Obviously, it's a massive Yorkshire derby tomorrow. Uh, Barnsley versus Uddersfield. Uh, I love these kind of games, me. So yeah, <laughs> I'm just going to get straight over to Brad and tell us a bit about your son, Brad, if you don't mind, and about Uddersfield this season. Yeah, pretty, you know, pretty similar kind of content to, to yourselves, really. Just uh, everything Uddersfield Town, kind of uh, obviously the previews. The vlogs and then a couple of fan cams. Um, actually, just looking at your channel now, you do the exact same. Um, one of few channels that does do it. But yeah, um, just just obviously a uh, um, little concept like that, and um, should be interesting tomorrow. Um, <laughs> I, I do agree with what you say. I am. Um, I'm going to be honest. Not for any particular reason, other than it's close and it's a nice, good do on train. Yeah, we always look for Barnsley because it's nice and you know it's nice and you know close by, and it's always a it's always a cheap one as well, to yeah. be honest. It's it's always cheap and it's always one of those games where you think, which way is this going to go? Because it always does seem to be like that with us, uh, funnily enough. So, yeah. And we've always had some memorable clashes as well, pretty recent. Obviously, I was stay, staying up and going to uh, your place, on, you know, under Fleetcroft. It was it like a party atmosphere. And to be fair, even Uddersfield Town fans were, one, you know, we're, we're a big party all the way around. And I think it, I don't know if it's because it were a Yorkshire kind of thing, but uh, like I said, I love I love derbies, me. Um, yeah, yeah. What one thing I miss, and even more so now we we can go back to the game and all. You know what I mean? With COVID and back, I missed it. So yeah, yeah. It's, I'm it's looking forward to it. Um, obviously, walk, um, watch alongs and everything from from a chair. It's just not even remotely the same. It's, not same, is it? No, no you just same. can't get anywhere near where you. Um, where you want to be, really, and that's just obviously in the, gr- <laughs> the grounds and that, isn't it? So yeah, I mean, it's like you'll, you'll probably be the same. And all Brad is like when you go to the stand, I go with my son, season ticket over in Pont. I, mean, I call it Pontian, but it's Pontefract Road, and straight opposite where you are, I like. And it's not only like if you go with a family member, but it's people around you. We have that banter and, yeah, this yeah. and all, isn't yeah, it? You yeah, know yeah. what I mean? A crack and yeah, have yeah. a drink and a pint with. I look. I, yeah, I miss, yeah, I miss that. Myself. Yeah, it, 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 that is. And do you know what else it is as well? And a lot of people might not realise this. It's actually just as well just doing the journey. I mean, we find a lot of the time that we've been to Cardiff and Swansea and it's just such a laugh being with mm. your mates again. And just you just you just talk absolute rubbish for six hours and, but that's and a, you just end up... It's, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, only only us kind of people that, that do it week in, week out would know. But Because <laughs> but, some people look at me and they go... Why'd you go to Swansea well, just to lose them? Like, just for just for a crack, just for a laugh. Like I was gonna say when you like, when you've lived all week for it, you worked and you you know, you lived your you know family and all that kind of stuff. It's like a bit of a yeah. oh, get out of oh, bit of the day out, yeah, isn't it? It's but, you day know out, what I mean? It's so good, it's good laugh and everything, isn't it? So <laughs> uh so going uh, back to the field then uh, Brad, how do you think uh, your season's gone this you know, I mean I think you're eighth some yeah, you're eighth at league, aren't you? So yeah, it's it's not going too bad. Your results are a bit up and down, or would you it's a be expected? I think to be honest, I think we've just swapped with you mm. off, off the back of last season, because obviously uh you lost your manager, didn't you, to West Brom. Yeah. And obviously since then it's been difficult. I mean, the situation with us is we're a bit 50-50 at minute, which is why I don't like this game because I don't know how to explain this properly, but we are the Robin Hood of this league. Mm. We play the teams that are good and beat them and then give points to the teams at the bottom end, silly. Yeah. So yeah. we play we played Blackburn and won in a 3-2 thriller midweek. We beat West Brom. Um, um we beat Millwall, we beat Blackpool, we beat Sheffield United. And um, and you know here there and a couple of we picked up a couple of points in that mid table and kind of top area region, uh, and then and then we play the likes of Peterborough and, and bottle it, the likes of Cardiff and lose, mm. uh, the likes of Forest giving them the first win of the season and give Swansea their first home win of the season when we went there. So I, that's why I don't really like this kind of fixture because on paper it doesn't matter what form we're in, we should, we should really aim to win this game. You know you. You, you know, you're 23rd, you're in a struggle yourselves at the minute. Yeah. But in derbies, like you say, it's never that simple. It's never that easy. There's always something that has to go and has to give. Um, but yeah, we've had, we, don't get me wrong, we've had a great season so far. What I'm saying is we're slowly kind of burning out a little bit now and we need some players back from injury in order to keep it going because 
one of our best players, Jonathan Hogg, he's been out recently. And the contrast in midfield is just yeah. absolute day and night. And I'll, I'll put my hand up straight away. I said there were one game where we had another player in there and I said, oh, maybe we should, you know, drop him. But obviously now I'm looking at it and going, yeah, I was clearly clueless because we look lost without him. And yeah. we're just not, just not that. We're good, but we're just not as good as what we were. And I think we just need a couple of games um, where we win to get back on track, really. Yeah, you've got, got did some good points here, Brad, to be fair. Yeah, we, like I said, we, lo- we lost manager to West Brom and also Mowit went, he followed him to West Brom and all as his captain. So I know Shop came in and he didn't make ground running. I think he won one game and he was struggling and, you know, even fans were turning on him. Uh, and you, you get your so called happy clappers as well, even when Bay come out and, and start saying it, it's like, yeah, yeah, you the, know. the writing's on the wall, isn't it? Yeah, I yeah. know what you mean. We had a we had a situation like when we come down from the Prem, we got a guy in called Siva, and basically he was like this. He, he basically was like a bit like a scapegoat because he had an impossible job of keeping his up, which he was never mm. going to do. And then in the end, he, he was a bit clueless in you know, how to you know structure us for the championship. And it wasn't until we got the Cowleys that we got our first win. Uh, in ages so yeah I, when, when the happy clappers turn on them you kind of look at it and go it's kind of done really in it and yeah yeah so I mean uh, you just just going back to like Carlos and that and all I mean um, I know we well didn't we him a couple of seasons ago obviously when it was Stendhal and uh, Struber kind of era and I, I I always liked him me I was I always liked him me and now they're doing well um, down at Portsmouth aren't they you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. They're really at ground running there. So Cal as well. Do you think that they... Do you th- would you like to still see Cal is still at Huddersfield? Or do you think time was for him to go? Um, At the time, we were a bit confused because he kept us up, obviously, with that Smith Rowe goal mm. against West Brom. And we were all looking like, wait, what? Like, he just kept us up. Um... But I mean, looking on it now, we do play better football. Um, but I think the frustrations that we have isn't where we are or anything to do with the football, or it's just how we manage the game. We we lose points very easily. We we just we perfect example. This is this is brilliant. What happened when we played this fixture last time? You scored in the 90th minute to win it. Yeah, yeah. We have a habit. Well, our last season we had a habit of going ahead and bottled it. I think I think we finished in the end, 18th or 19th. And if we hadn't bottled all points that we did, we'd have finished third. That's how many points we lost Big difference from there. winning positions. So, we oh, don't get me wrong, we've improved massively. Our defence looks nowhere near um, what it is. Mm. So, we've made massive improvements. So, I'm not going to come out and say that, you know, it was wrong because they're clearly better, better management, but... There are some games where we kind of make subs too late, um, sit off when we should keep pressing. Mm. You know, like when you go one nil up, and as an on an away day, if you go one nil up, you go for two. You don't yeah. sit back and wait. You go for two because if you sit back and you let them come on to you, just inviting it, isn't it? If they score one, it's good night, Vienna. They're going to try and you know they're going to try and get another one, aren't they? So yeah. yeah, it's it's one of those where we're really happy with the approach. But we could really have some more kind of game management and be a bit more smarter tactically. And we, we could even be, you know, six or fifth. We've been there at points this season. So, mm. you know. It, it's just like what you've been saying there. It's obviously with style and structure, stuff like that. <clears throat> and under, when Ishmael went, Shop came in and he still, he still tried playing with three at the back, but it was just fitting players in positions what weren't available. Yeah. Um, I look back on some of the recruitment as well, where he fully backed in the summer. I don't think he was in certain areas. Uh, mm-hmm. Obviously, we had DK on loan from Orlando, so he went back to America, striker, what were banging goals in. He lost he went, yeah, in midfield. He was very good, wasn't he? Yeah. He was were, he were banging him. He got one against us at our place when you beat us. So. And, he, and he's a solid lad and all. Solid lad. It's not until I'm watching on MLS now on, on uh, TV and you, you don't realise how big a presence he is on, on pitch because he's, he's playing back in America, at Orlando. Uh, you've got Moe, who went to midfield, captain, and then Saul Bauer, who was uh, central defender. So when you, I think if, if any team loses, like more or less spine out, and you've still got to restructure. Shot came, yeah, up, yeah. didn't really strengthen in certain areas. You could play him back to the board or, you know, manager at time. But at the end of the day, if you're a manager, you still want to get the best out of players, and you won't get him back from players. 
I won't say that players weren't playing for him because it'd be for me to say, but there was one player what come out on uh, local radio, uh, Radio Sheffield, and actually said um, in training, I wanted to cross ball in for att- attacking players to run onto it. It was not the says we don't even know what we're doing in training. And I thought, if players are saying yeah. that, what's happening? So, uh, but, um, when Poy-, Poy came in, he came in, obviously, he'd been at IFK, Gothenburg with young players, Swedish under 21s. But now he's going to play in four at back rather than three. So over his recruitment, what we've been doing for the last 18 months to a year, he's been playing and buying players in to fit the three at the back system, not the four at the back. Yeah, you're getting wing backs in and then now you're having to play full backs. So yeah. it, it just, yeah, it, it jumbles it up when you don't need it. Yeah. Again, similar situation to us. We've, we've moved from, obviously, when we had Wagner, it was 4 2 3 1. See, they had 4 3 3 which really didn't work for him. That was like one of the worst structures I'd seen because we, we didn't know how to play it. So mm. there's no good having one of the best formations in the world if you can't play it. Uh, Cowley's reverted his back to 4-2-3-1, but a bit more direct kind of in the air and a bit more driving it through middle as well sometimes. Um, but Carlos, fair play to him. He's got a 3-4-3 working quite well. Mm. So obviously that would be interesting, but it's working so far. Um I know, you know, it goes it goes back to the point. If we, if we didn't have a couple of players injured, if we uh, maybe, you know, back a little bit in January, who knows? We could be up there. But I get what you're saying. There's nothing worse than when you, you buy for a, for a five-back or a three-back and then someone comes in and it just all is just like, it all goes wrong, doesn't it? There's yeah. no organisation at all. Uh, so, Obviously, we're going to get on about players. I think we're going to be ready for January transfer when they come round. Um, although yeah. he did a bit of a statement in, in media yet again. He was asked questions by press and stuff uh, on about getting a bit of experience inside, you know, to bolster it and gear a bit of confidence. And it didn't say we're going for that, but all points we're going towards is working with players with what he's got with, which were a bit alarming as a fan to hear. You wanted to hear, so yeah, I've identified these are. But to say it's like working, whether it's just a small screen, I don't know. But I'd like to have a, 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 two or three bodies to come into our side, not necessarily just into the side, but into the squad as well to beef it up. Because you need yeah, definitely. Our stuff and you still someone to come off at bench to make a difference. Is are you in the same position at Um, I think there are areas that we do need to improve. But our starting eleven has been really good this season. But the problem is is if we get found out, we don't really have a backup plan. Mm. So, I mean, you know, we've just we've just beat West Brom. Uh, so we beat, we beat, let's go back even further, we beat Millwall after bouncing back from Bournemouth. Bournemouth and Fulham, I don't, I don't look at them as actual fixtures now, I just look at them as free hits because yeah. their squads are just far superior. superior. To, so you just look at them and you go, whatever. I'm not, mm. not going to cry if lose to Bournemouth because it's Bournemouth. They've got, they, one, Solanke's worth more than the entire team. So, you know, that's, <laughs> By the by, um, I mean, and then we go beat Millwall, who were in the same position as massive three points, and then, and then we just we let ourselves go a bit. So it, it does make you think. I, I think Danny Ward's good for work rate. He wasn't at start. He's good for work rate, but maybe a striker would be a good, good addition, probably. Mm. Uh, maybe a couple of wingers as well, because if Sorba Thomas is playing on wing, um. Um, we've got a lot of players that are very 50-50 that are on it one game and then they're just crap. Like, Not consistent. Totally. Yeah. I mean, because we've got all that Louis O'Brien that who Leeds wanted and since Hogg's been absent and he's got that armband, he's been absolutely awful. Both mm. games as well. Mm. Like Q, all right, QPI he was okay, but the captain, you don't really want to be okay. You want him to excel. You want him to be good in that. So, yeah. I think there are areas defence. We've been solid this season. You know, we've got some good lads there. Goalkeeper, one of the best we've had in years. Absolutely solid. But I do think maybe a bit of depth in midfield. Um, maybe a star player, maybe in midfield. Um, maybe a winger or so and a striker. And, and then I'd, I'd be a bit more... Well, obviously, there's nothing to fear. I don't think we're going down. But be a bit more like, you know, come on. We could maybe get playoffs. So let's, yeah. let's you know, gear ourselves up a bit and get a bit like, come on, let's... At least, at least look like we're trying to get there because a lot of teams that are there don't deserve to be there. I mean, we're one of them. I'm not saying we're not, but Coventry mm. are like us. They ride off a lot of home form. 
So there's a lot of teams up there that are kind of not usual. So so it's anyone's game this year. From I'm looking now from 14 to six is seven points. It's not. It's yeah. So it's all game. If we make a couple of signings, then yeah, similar situation to you, just sort of other kind of end of the table, really. Yeah. Uh, interesting thing we've just gone on here about captain. We've, we're having the same problem um, at with Corley Woodrow, obviously. Uh, Mowit went to West Brom, so Corley got an uh, armband. I'm, I'm, I've, I've said it on previous videos and stuff like that. I'm old school. I don't like a captain as a as a striker because I don't think we can no, yeah, game. Yeah. You know what I mean? Midfield or defence, you need someone in there. And Corley's and Cort- and Cort- and game for me has also suffered as well. I think it's too much weight on his shoulders wants to do everything and when your strike is like that and he's not hitting back at net and his confidence is lacking like you said as a captain God it's, you want someone on pitch to motivate him but as an attacker as well and you look at him and he's like he's yeah. our main oh, man yeah. and it's, it's affecting him 100% agree oh, yeah. it's like... there's, there's far too many times that a player like say attacking midfield forward will miss a chance and the head goes down and yeah. you can't let that obviously affect the rest of the team yeah. No, yeah, I, I am a bit like that as well. I think you you centre half, or you're holding mid, or you or your box to box. They're, they're the they're, they're, that's who you are. Someone who's going to be very involved because yeah. there are games where wingers cannot be involved and fullbacks cannot be involved. Um, but obviously, a lot of the ball will go through the centre at, mm. at parts. You know, especially if you're playing, you know, like someone like Middlesbrough or something, which is a bit. Well, saying that maybe not Middlesbrough now, but like I don't know, like a Brom or something where they're always hoofing it, and yeah, you, you know, it's going to go through the middle. I know, I get what you're saying. You don't want your striker being captain, but yeah. I mean, what Woodrow's? I've I've followed him for quite a while now. He's been with you quite a couple of years. Oh, yeah, when he's he on it, he is on it. He is, but he just seems to go through spells where he'll not score, then score, and then not score, and then score, don't he? Yeah, and 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 it's suffering. You, you can see it on pitch. I mean, there were. A game, I think it, I think it was Birmingham or all. I forget which one. I going back, it might have been Birmingham game, and we'd lost at home. And obviously tensions were high in stands because the shot was still there, and we'd lost. Yeah. It, was, it, was, it was bad, and fans were like booing and all that kind of stuff. And I always stay at end at game me, and sort of section that fans were having to go at Woodrow, and Woodrow were having to get pulled away by his, you know, his teammates, and. That for me is more frustration. No player wants to go out and love us. Obviously, they're going through a bad patch of form. And then when other yeah. things start coming out, I'm thinking the lad's not wanting to play bad. He's lacking in confidence. He's drained from me. You can you can see what's happening to the lad. But what I said to my son and people behind me were like, "Should have been the backroom staff should be able to see that and put him to one side and don't let him be taking all corners and free kicks and don't, yeah, everything's yeah. going to him. Take, take some pressure off him. Let him play his game. Don't put the onus all on him. If he's just because he's a star player doesn't mean he can be a star player every week. Exactly. exactly. We've got the exact same situation with Sauber Thomas. I'm not joking yet. First eight games of the season, I, I couldn't believe my eyes. I was looking, I was like, we've got a player that could not only take a corner and beat the first man, brilliant dead ball on free kicks, and, and he's playing wing back. We played him wing back because we had to, and he was still excelling in that space. Mm. And I was literally watching him, and I was like, like, proper, like, wow, like, we've got this guy for 10K from Boreham Wood. Like, like, what a steal. And then he's had a couple of games where, you know, maybe he's got tired for playing for Wales. Maybe it went to his head a little bit. I don't know, but I just don't want him to just kind of lose it now because he were doing so well and it'd be such mm. a shame if he just if he just lost it now because he's having a couple of on and off games where he's not really you know beating the, the man like he used to or, or doing the same I mean at Cardiff he was massively at fault for their 90th minute winner uh, he tried to run through everyone you know like a typical winger does and and he should have just blasted it you know put it out of play give him a throw in and their end I couldn't care less that's not going to hurt us mm. And he said he tried to beat his man and then he got caught out. He tried. He, he should have trapped that to his men. Looked like he had lead in his boots because he were knackered. Went that other end, Kiefer Moore, and just sat there like, wow. Like, yeah, yeah. And it, it were wasted. So I do get where you're coming from. But when you've got a player who excels and then all of a sudden he just gets brought down back to a kind of level where he can't really contribute, it's, it's not easy for him to find it again. And obviously, hopefully, for us, that's not the case we saw. But... 
Mm. Mm. Uh, so obviously players to watch. You've mentioned a few players there to, uh, to keep an eye out for. Who do you think will be up? Oh, I said be up for the game, but who do you think will be a standout player for us field tomorrow going into this? I mean, if we're basing it off Saturday, I think I think kiosk Stafford mascot might be a bit more up for it because we got absolutely schooled mm. by Middlesbrough. <laughs> it's even funnier. They advertised it as the kinder tag game mm. uh, with, with ambassador uh, come for a quid uh, under 18s and then we go and play like that. Yeah. So ambassador's gone around every school in, in Huddersfield, you know, from, from kind of Shepley and, and all up by everywhere to, to go and see us play like that. Um, oh, God, <laughs> who do I think will play good? I mean, our star players have just dropped off recently. I think I tell you who who I can rely on, and that's our goalkeeper because he's absolutely unreal. Mm. And he was second choice at MK Dons, and I'm sat there looking, and I'm like, how? <laughs> like <laughs> he's just like you know, like when you sign someone, and you know they were they were dirt at another club, and you look at them, and they're like gold to you, and you're like, what? The, how is yeah. this guy not? And I was just sat there because. Me and, we, me and me and one of my mates have got a thing now where every time a ball gets crossed in and Nichols catches it, he looks at me. <laughs> and, and I look at him and we know, because we, we both said, since Nichols has come in, we feel safe with every cross that he's going to catch it. Because yeah. we've had a habit of goalkeepers dropping them recently. We've had Grabara from Liverpool drop them, Schofield who's dropped a couple. And it's just so refreshing. So I can tell you, he will be reliable. Mm. Uh, touch wood, I'll watch him have an absolute stinker tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> Tom Lees. Tom Lees has been very good. It's very surprising yeah. from, obviously, uh, not so noisy anymore neighbours, Sheffield Wednesday, but he, uh, he's he been solid. You know, he, solid as a rock for, for a defender that's that was kind of in a moment with Wednesday where it was like, he's past it. He's been mm. solid for us. So, you know, fair play to the lad. Uh, same goes for Naby Sai. He's also been very good. But I am... Um, I've got a feeling tomorrow that someone off the bench, maybe. Yeah, I've got a feeling I think Fraser Campbell might have a good game. I don't mm. know why, I've just got a feeling. It, it, he's quite in your face and obviously with yeah. it being a derby in your face game, I feel like that's his bread and butter, really. So That's um, what you need, isn't it? In a he's derby. a grafter at the end of the day. That's why I love Fraser. You bring him on, he's sprinting straight away and at 34, he runs marathons. So fair play to him. <laughs> he's going to do a job. <laughs> God knows how he does it, but yeah. Uh, for, for me, it, like I said, we've, we've, it's, we've had a stinker this season, so a, a lot in it's down to form and confidence. Uh, Devante Cole has been coming good in the last couple of games recent. Um, Brad Collins, our goalkeeper, he has, you know, he's been playing that sweeper keeper for a couple of seasons and he has got his, you know, got his eyes some, some mistakes, but also he's liable to odd blunder at all, but... Um, when you take pros and cons with him, but I, you know, Brad, Brad will be up for it. Looking at back, yeah. I'm hoping that Elik, um, Elik and Anderson are going to be both uh, solid again. I know Anderson's come back from injury, but Elik, we being Polish international now. Nah. Um, I think there's a fair few Barnsley fans under the impression that he might be going in January because it obviously is in Polish side now, nah. uh, which should be a shame because. I think you, you want to abandon it back. Is in midfield. I, I struggle me in midfield because there's that many <laughs> ins and outs. We could have Callum Styles in mid centre in midfield. We could have Gomez or Benson in midfield. I just don't know what what he's going to do. I don't know if he's going to play four two three one or four three three because for the last couple of games it's been four at back, but it's been tinkering in midfield and up front. So yeah. Uh, Callum Styles, I'd like to see him, you know, become a bit more consistent. Uh, again, I think it's a lot of starting to confidence. But I'm, if Zach is uh, fit and he's right, I'd like to see him start as well. Because uh, he's, he's a player that has got pace, he likes to get in it, up and in it. Uh, well, I think he'll play well tomorrow. I'm wanting him all to play well, but I'm hoping that Woodrow can like score. Just for his confidence to get back and just yeah, get back, definitely. Just get it off the shoulder as well. Yeah, yeah. That's um, what, that would be the perfect thing for him. Yeah, um, I was just looking now. You you've got our for our, our old right back from the Prem, Jordan Williams, aren't you? He's your, yeah, like yeah. your left back now, Hugh. 
Well, he's um, been playing at left back, but he's right footed, isn't he? So <laughs> that went back when I, it's a bit bit weird, like, yeah. But, <laughs> but yeah, I, I do remember watching um Brad Brad Collins. It was when you know when they had that Stoke game selected for TV. Yeah. That, that he had a very good game. So he's clearly capable of turning it on. Hopefully he doesn't do it tomorrow. But yeah. <laughs> Um, be nice so, to win a game. Oh, not half, yeah. I mean, we got a, a point against Peterborough, <laughs> which will like absolute bar draw, but near mine. We'll move on back from that one. <laughs> the Yorkshire Derby. Plus, he's had a full week. We know midweek fixtures, so I'm hoping he's been on training pitch and working on stuff, free kicks, and obviously get, trying to get confidence Definitely, back yeah. the lads. Uh, style and formation. Uh, brush, brushed up on it. I'm thinking, for, for me, style is... I'm hoping it's going to be up and at them kind of thing. Formation. Yeah. I don't know if it's going to be a 4 2 3 1 or a 4 3 3, to be fair, Brad, on this. Um, and probably prove me all wrong and probably revert back to three at back. And I, what do I know? You know what I mean? So I don't know what he's doing. I mean, but... I've seen stranger things, but what you may do is you may try and mirror ours. If they've done their homework, you might try mm. to copy ours. And then obviously by doing that, my mark. Yeah, yeah. Because obviously that sometimes does work. Mm. So we will go with a three four three. I can tell you that we've I'd put money down that we've played that three four three. I think we played it every game about like two. So yeah. we play that three four three religiously now. Uh, I can tell you, Hog won't be playing, so that's mm. huge. Obviously, um, I it probably will go with the same. Lineup that he went with last time. I might drop Lee's off. No, he'll drop probably Sar Water. I personally think that Nabi Sar's our best defender, but he always benches him, which is always mm. the thing. And he's six foot five, so he's absolutely massive mm-hmm. and on aerial threats. Mm. I just I want to see him there because obviously he's massive. You you want the tallest player on the pitch. Yeah, yeah. Um, we'll probably go unchanged to be honest. Maybe if not Sar, just swap him. Mm. I'd like to see Josh Caroma involved more because he's not getting played. And when he's getting brought on, the game's kind of already done. And then we're kind of like, I've heard him, I've heard people saying that he's not trying. Well, if you don't start him, and all you do is bring him off bench, you can't really. Borrow, we won't come back into that game no matter how, how long we played. Borrow were far superior in every way. Mm. They wanted it more, the second ball, aerial. They just. They didn't even get out of second gear to be fair. Yeah, yeah. Um, so so it didn't really matter, but I, I in this game I'd probably start Fraser as well, like I say, because it's a bit more scrappy. And remember last time we played you when O'Brien scored that volley, and obviously yeah. I think uh Jacob Brown who scored for you. Yeah, yeah. And who else was it now? Um it'll come to me. But you were on it that day and uh, it got a bit dirty at the end. Like, apparently, our player stamped, stamped on your player. Yeah, your but a bit tasty, wasn't it? Yeah. That last 30 minutes, it was just bedlam and everyone was just trying to get one up on each other. And mm. in the end, we got we left with egg on his face. So, see what happens tomorrow, which leads us nicely into score prediction. What, you know, what, what, what are you going for on this one? Uh, I mean, it's. I think there's going to be goals in it. I think there's definitely going to be goals in it. Um, I'm saying, obviously, I'm wanting it's going to be. Hard. I'm wanting a win. Obviously, it's going to be a win. Yorkshire Derby, and I'd like it to start straight away because I think the longer it goes on, we're going to be going into winter, uh, Christmas period, and then there's like FA Cup and fixtures will be coming up thick and fast, kind of thing. So. Um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit. I'm, I'm gonna sit two-one Barnsley, um, but I could see it easily being two-two or something like that. I, I just think there's goals in it. Yorkshire Derby, I think it, the crowd's gonna make it and all. It's gonna be atmosphere and everything's gonna be there. Yeah, yeah. We uh, um, this is the game that we had to bring the most to. Yeah, obviously with it being with it being the shorter distance and quite cheap, like I said. So everybody is at this game. Um, Are you coming on train, bro? Uh, to, to where, um, yeah, we're. Um, I think I think we're meeting. One second, I think it's cut. Right there, oh, we go. No, right, right, yeah, yeah. 
Um, I think we're meeting at Weatherspoons at like 10 past yeah. summer and we're having a breakfast and obviously we'll grab drinks in or whatever. And it's easy if you go and train. Um, yeah. So I think the direct train it is. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I don't know. Part of me just want to say probably something like around the lines of 2-2, two, two, but we've been solid defensively. So, mm. but then again, no, we haven't recently. Yeah, I'm going to say 2-2 two, two, actually. 2-2. Mm. Two, two. I don't think I don't think we'll win. I don't I don't know what it is. We never do well at, um, at Oakwell, so so Let's see what happens. <laughs> yeah, I, what happens. I'd say two two. Yeah, cool. So I appreciate Brad uh, being on uh, for, on Tax TV. Appreciate it, uh, Brad. Uh, um, any of us feel fans don't like that watching any uh, Bouncy fans watching? Please go on uh, Brad Barb's Twitter, YouTube. Uh, good guy. I'm hoping that when um, we come to Huddersfield as well, we'll do another run and then just see where you know where about since season we're going to be, and uh, we'll have another one and see if we can get score predictions right or wrong. So who knows? <laughs> and see yeah, we've signed to compare it, it back. Yeah. So yeah, I just want to uh, say thanks and appreciate you for joining me, Brad, uh, today. Yeah, yeah, no, it's great to get to talk about a game, uh, especially one that's got history like this one. <laughs> I'll never forget that two two at our place where we, where the um, and, do you remember where the? I think it was your keeper. He had the ball. Oh, and, and he, he just he just what is it? He had it and he just put it down and put no one down. moved because yeah. we both realised we were both staying up and we didn't care. So we both just sat there and looked at each other and went. And, and like, yeah, yeah, it's almost like old medium bats like making a big thing. It's like yeah, and and <laughs> <laughs> we're both staying up. That's, Job done. Yeah, no. Um, yeah, thanks for letting me tune in. Um, not a problem. Yeah, it's no, been no. great. And uh, hopefully for us, it's not going to be another loss. At what point would be okay, I guess, especially with the kind of thing it is. But I really don't want to be losing this game because then it would be another team down in the bottom five that we'd handed. Yeah, what you were just on about, weren't you, early on? So, yeah. Uh, we, may, we may as well just like rename the club to Robin Hood FC at that point <laughs> fully because <laughs> that, is, that is literally what we would become. <laughs> so we're praying not. But yeah, uh, massive thanks for, for letting me come on. Not a problem. Cheers, Brad. Um, so one thing left to say, you Reds. <laughs>